Hello and welcome to another ACI bite size video. My name is Colin Lynch and in this video we're going to be walking through um, integrating Cisco UCS and VMware with Cisco ACI. Now a few years ago I did do this video uh, which was much more in depth and uh, more detail uh, where I configured all the elements manually um, so there's the link for that. Um, in this video we're actually going to whiz through using the wizards. Since uh, my last video Cisco have introduced lots of nice uh, wizards and canvas for drag and drop configuration so I thought I'd update this video uh, uh, to allow to show show all those nice features. Okay so in these bite size series uh, they're meant to be very short punchy videos um, just showing a particular element of ACI configuration. So this video we're going to be concentrate on the UCS integration down there along with the VMware integration. So it's essentially that, that configuration we're going to be doing. So we're going to be configuring our VPCs from our Fabric A UCS, our VPC from our Fabric B. We're going to be integrating the VMware environment, uh, creating an application and then we're also going to integrate one of the UCS bare metal blades. Okay, so a couple of things we're going to need, because um, obviously we are doing the VMware integration, we will need the IP address or host name of our vCenter, along with the vCenter credentials. Okay, so the configuration we're going to be building today is, is fairly simple. So essentially we're going to have two subnets with a couple of web uh, VMs on them, a essentially a router in between and a VM in an application um, tier. So that's how it would look in a traditional environment and the way we apply that to Cisco ACI would be to create our VRF, so again a construct that all the traditional networkers will be familiar with. Then we're going to create our bridge domains. Uh, now bridge domains are, you can think of them like a kind of like a subnet, it's actually a, a broadcast um, construct. So think about like a flooding domain. I, I tend to think of them like a layer 2 switch. So you could potentially have multiple subnets on them with secondary addressing uh, but essentially people just generally have uh, one subnet per bridge domain. So then we're going to create our application profile which is quite similar to a, a server profile in UCS. And we're going to create our endpoint group. Everything within ACI is a endpoint and obviously we have endpoint groups to put those endpoints in. So we're going to create one for web, one for app, and then we're going to create our contract between the two endpoint groups. In Cisco ACI we don't apply policy between subnets like we would do in a traditional environment, but we apply them between our endpoint groups. Okay, and then this is how they would actually look within the ACI environment. So essentially we've just got that fairly simple default topology and in the ACI environment we would just see our two endpoint groups, our web and our app, connected by a uh, contract which in effect is a, an ACL between the two endpoint groups and then from an in infrastructure perspective you would see our VRF and our two bridge domains. Those Vs down there uh, are merely showing that we've integrated VMware uh, into our environment. So those endpoint groups will show up as port groups within the VMware infrastructure. Right, so let's get started on the configuration. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up our VPCs to our UCS Fabricants Connects. So these two connections here. So our FIA is going to port 1 on both leaf switches and our FIB is going to port 2 on both leaf switches. Uh, so we've got some nice symmetry uh, which makes a uh, very efficient use of policies. So let's go and do that. Okay, so we want to go into our access policies and we're going to use our VPC wizard this time. Um, on the previous video I did um, for the UCS ACI integration. Um, I did all this manually via the navigation pane over there. So it may be worth a, a, a revisit to that video because it's always good to 
you know, appreciate what goes on behind the wizards. But as this is a, a bite size video, we're going to just use our, our wizards and our drag and drop capabilities. So I've already got our VPC uh, pair defined here. Um, this is this is already running a, a, an open stack environment. So, but if I hadn't uh, defined that VPC domain, it's simply a case of hitting the plus sign there, giving it an arbitrary uh, domain ID number, and then just selecting the two switches you want to participate in the VPC. Um, you know, use is ACI 101. Uh, there's no such thing as a a point-to-point -point peer link between the leaf switches in ACI, the leaf switches don't get connected together, the peer link is actually formed through the spine, uh, you don't have to worry about that. So let's go back into that wizard. So let's just select our two switches up the top there. So we've already got a, a policy that encompasses both leaf 101 and 102. So any configuration I apply here will apply to both of those switches. So once they're highlighted, I just simply click the plus sign there to add another interface. So we're going to do a VPC. So FIA is on port 1 slash 1 of both of those leafs. So I'm going to give that interface selector a little more of a, a description. I'm going to call that UCS dash FI dash A. Okay, we're going to create a interface policy group. So we're going to NA disable CDP enable LLDP. So again, explained in the previous video, um, this is the policy between the leaf switches and the fabric interconnects. So we're going to turn off CDP there and enable LLDP. And we want to match our UCS configuration, so we want LACP active. Now this configuration down the bottom here um, is asking us what have we got on the end of this VPC. Um, so we've got a bare metal blade, uh, but we've also got a a vSphere environment. Um, so we can configure the vSphere environment as part of this wizard. That's got a, the more moving parts in it, so we're going to go with the uh, configuring the VMware integration as part of this wizard. So we're going to say yes, ESX hosts. We're going to create a domain. So this domain will be the name that um, is used to create the distributed virtual switch. So again, we'll call that something sensible. Oh, I'm going to create one there, sorry. And we'll call this UCS VMware. Okay, we're going to create a VLAN pool. Um, again, for from ACI's perspective, it's going to you know, dish out these VLANs similar to you know like a DHCP type scenario um, into the VMware environment. Just be aware that obviously these VLANs need to be trunked on your UCS uplinks. So we're going to use 20 or so VLANs there. This is our vCenter login name, which is admin is straight. How do I spell this wrong? Straight at v sphere dot local. Um, obviously you could use a service account for that. Um, Cisco do publish the privileges that Cis that service account needs for the uh, VMware integration. And our password. Again. And we're going to add our vCenter. So we'll just give it a name. VCenter and the hostname or IP address so 172.22.140.1110 is my vCenter here. Uh, the data center name must match exactly, so we'll have a quick look there. So data center name is SDN Lab. SDN Lab. Okay. And down the bottom we have our vSwitch policy. So as you'll know with UCS, the fabric interconnects are independent from each other. Then they're not a VPC pair. As such, we can't run a LACP northbound port channel from our vSwitch. So we'll use the MAC pinning. So essentially it'll, you know, it'll pin a particular VM to one uplink. So we don't have VMs flapping between the fabrics. 
and we need CDP. Put on the V switch. Okay, and I think that is everything. Let me just double check. Okay, that all looks good. So let's save that. And save and submit. Okay, now that should get our UCS port channels up. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so they're still orange, but it can take a little while. So we've obviously only configured the Fabric Interconnect A at the moment. Okay, so that looks like it's on its way up. Okay, it's still individual, so it's not seeing LECP yet. But as we know with the UCS, it can take a, a wee while. So just give that a couple of minutes. Oh, a few secs. So it never goes up when you're watching it. So hopefully we should see those orange boxes disappear momentarily. Okay, perfect. So that is now up and is it membership. Okay, so that is our port channel up to Fabric Interconnect A. Okay, let's see what's happening in vCenter. So that's our networking. If I just give a refresh here. We can see our distributed virtual switch has been created by the APIC. And that's just using the vCenter uh, DVS API. If we break that out, we can see our distributed virtual switch and our two default port groups. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to do is just add some hosts to that distributed virtual switch. So if I go and add a couple of hosts. So I've got a management cluster and a tenant cluster. So it's the tenant cluster I'm going to add into ACI. So we have two spare VNIX, so a sign up link. Okay, so those two hosts should now be added. Okay, right, so before we add our virtual machines, let's just go and get our VPC up to Fabric Interconnect B. So we need to go back to our APIC and into our access policies and create another VPC. Okay, we're going to create another port channel. So there's our port channel to Fabric Interconnect A. So we're going to create another one. So let's highlight our switch profile again. And add an interface. This time it's port 1, 2 on both leaves to our FIB. So again, let's call that something sensible. UCS dash FI dash B. Okay, we're going to create a policy group. So again, we're going to disable CDP, enable LLDP, and set your VPC there, and have it as a LACP active. Okay, again, ESX hosts, although now we've actually already created our VMware domain and our v VMware pool of VLANs, so we can just now choose one. 
and we'll choose the one we created last time which was UCS VMware okay so again we're going to use CDP and Mac pinning from the vSwitch and that's all we should need there so again we'll save save submit and if we have a look we should have another VPC configured let's go and check UCS okay so this should be on its way up looks like it is and we'll just give that a few secs okay so it is up okay so let's go back to our APIC and have a look okay so we should now see our, our VMware tab we should see our ESX environment to refresh okay so our controller is our vCenter our hypervisor are our hosts so there's the two hosts that we've added to that vSwitch and we should also be able to see which virtual machines are running on that this information is is gleaned uh, from uh, vCenter by the management plane so just because they're we're seeing them here doesn't necessarily mean we can see them on the fabric but we have a, a check for that later okay and again we can have a quick check on our ACI side so we're going to our inventory tab which is the sort of the physical uh, representation of our fabric we can see our leaf switches have a look at the interfaces so we can see ports 1 and 2 are up and in port channels and we can even see our port channels that we've created to FIA, FIB and they're up LACB active so that all looks good 100% healthy we can even see our UCS environment so if we go to unmanaged fabric nodes down here we can actually see our UCS switches here which actually get reported as blade switches so again you can see that it's detected our ESX hosts on the other end of those blade switches okay so our infrastructure is up our VMware integration is done so the next thing to do would be to create our application and the way that we do that we need to go and create our new tenant so a tenant in ACI is, as we know, is a sort of a logical construct uh, that uh, depicts a, a management uh, domain. Okay, so let's create a new one. We'll call this SDN Lab. And we can create a rather than have the default VRF name, we'll just create our SD. SDN lab VRF okay okay so we have our Lone VRF. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to create our two uh, bridge domains. Uh, again, bridge domain is a, a construct within ACI that equates to a, a flooding domain. I generally think of it as as a, a, a layer two switch, um, in effect. So it defines your flooding boundary. Um, 
it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one mapping with a, a VLAN because just like you can apply um, secondary addressing to a switch you can provide secondary addressing to a bridge domain uh, although generally um, more often than not most clients will um, have a one-to-one -one mapping between a subnet and a, a bridge domain so as per our diagram we're going to create two bridge domains uh, which will map to external VLANs um, as and when we get to the um, layer 2 integration um, so I could either do it uh, create these bridge domains via right clicking here create bridge domain or I could just use the canvas to drag and drop so you may as well do that so I create our two bridge domains and we'll just call these VLAN 10 and we'll give it a, an IP address so we'll add our gateway which VLAN 10 will be 10.10.10.254 so again we'll leave all these as default for the moment uh, we will advertise these out externally when we do our bite size video for an L3 out but for now we'll leave those as default ok I think I associate with RVRF Okay, and we'll create another one for our VLAN 20. And again, we'll give it our the default gateway. Which will be 10 uh, 20.20.20.254 20 slash 24. And again, for the moment, we'll leave these all as default. Okay, so we have our VRF and our two bridge domains created. So, the next thing we want to do is create our application profile. Again, that's very similar to a service profile in UCS. So, again, just a logical construct, and we'll call this our SD. N lab app and again we can use our canvas to draw this out as we want okay so here's our canvas for our SDN lab app so the first thing we're going to do is create a an endpoint group an EPG so we're going to create an EPG for web and an EPG for app. So we'll create that web. We're going to assign web the SDN Lab VLAN 10, which just means that any workloads, whether it be physical, bare metal, uh, virtual, that are in that EPG would need to reside in that um, VLAN 10 IP space that we've allocated. Okay. So we'll also create a EPG for app. We'll call that app. And we'll put that in the VLAN 20 bridge domain. Um, you've got here intra EPG isolation. Uh, by default, um, all endpoints with an endpoint group can communicate um, so you can in effect sort of micro segment that endpoint group by enforcing that um, but for our purposes we're fine things talking within an EPG okay so we have our two EPGs One thing I did forget to do here is to associate it with our VMM domain, but we can do that through the wizard as well. We can just drag our VMware environment onto our web EPG there, select our VMware environment that we previously created, and do the same with the app EPG. So 
we're basically saying to represent these EPGs within the VMware environment. Again, let's submit that. And let's go and have a look if they are indeed in the VMware environment. Well, there's been some distributed poor group reconfiguration been going on here, so let's have a look. Okay, so now we have our app and our web EPGs represented within vCenter. So the format there is the tenant, in this case STN Lab, the application name, STN Lab app, and then the tier. So obviously that's nice and descriptive for an application owner. Um, normally you'd see things like VLAN 10 there, um, which doesn't really mean a lot to an application person. So this is you know, much more user friendly. Okay, so now we have our port groups. We can actually assign our virtual machine to those port groups. So we'll do that now. We'll do that by the normal method. So we'll go into our web VMs. So we've got our web VMs in the web tier. So we should be able to select our web port group. app VM in the app port group okay now so a good check once there is in their respective port groups from the ACI side would be to actually go and have a look at these EPGs So there's our web EPG and if everything is working we should learn the IP addresses and MAC addresses of those VMs via the data plane. So again if we have a look in our operational tab, so we there so we see how we have it as a, a learned address, which means we actually are seeing it over the data plane. Uh, VMM means we're also being told by the management plane directly from vCenter. So you can see there we're learning the IPs and MACs from uh, web 1, Web 2, we can see that they're um, behind a vCenter and we can see that they're behind the two fabric interconnects so you can, you can see you get a, a lot of rich information here uh, we can see that the ACI, uh, the APIC has uh, dished out VLAN 1001 uh, to, to that port group which we can confirm in vCenter by having a look at the, the management and networking, so web. So obviously in uh, vCenter the port groups all need a VLAN associated so we should see that same VLAN represented in vCenter. Okay, and we should see the same thing for the app. So in this case VLAN 1002. So again we can confirm that on the APIC side. Look at the operational tab, make sure we're learning our app VM, which we are. Okay, so that all looks good. So let's do a couple of test pings. So from our web VM, let's just log that in. So first thing I'll check is we can ping our default gateway, which is the IP address we assigned it we assigned to the bridge domain, which was 10.0 10.10.10.254. So that's a good sign. We should be able to ping our other web VM in the same EPG, which is dot two, which we can, because we left that default um, of intra EPG isolation disabled. So let's see if we can ping our VM in the app tier, which was twenty dot twenty dot twenty dot one. So no, we can't do that. But let's just leave this pin going. So let's rectify that. So if we have a look at our APIC, it should be pretty obvious why we can't ping 
between those VMs if we have a look at our application. So we can see there our web tier and our app tier have actually no communication between the two. So what we need is a, you know, a router between the two uh, or in ACI terms we need a contract which is essentially an, an ACL. So within a contract we have our provider and consumer although in this case I'm just going to create a permit all. So I'm going to use an existing contract. I have a permit any there. Um, incidentally that the default common is also permit any. So if we say OK to that. So now we have a permit any ACL between those two EPGs. So if I submit that OK, let's check our ping now. And our ping is now working between our endpoints in the different EPGs. OK, so the last thing to do is configure the bare metal Windows blade. So you can see here uh, we have a bare metals windows blade that we're going to add into the application EPG. Okay, So we've already configured the VPC so we don't need to configure that again but we do need to add another pool of VLANs um, that will be used by our bare metal uh, blades. Uh, so the VLAN pool 1000-1020 is in effect being dynamically allocated by uh, the APIC to VMware so we're going to create another pool uh, which we're going to statically assign to our bare metal blades. So again, those VLANs will need to be uh, part of your UCS uplinks. So let's go and do that. So we go back to our APIC. And we'll go to our access policies. Now we want to create another pool. So there's the pool that the VMware uh, wizard created us. So this time we're going to create a manual pool. And we'll call this bare, bare metal blades. And then we're going to allocate this one statically. And VLAN range will start where we left off. 1021 to 1025. I'll statically allocate those. Okay, now we're going to create our physical domain to represent those bare metal servers. So we'll call this bare metal blades. We're going to allocate that. VLAN pool that we've just created. Okay, so we've done that. So let's go and find our AEP, which you remember we're finding global policies, which represents our UCS environment. So currently at the moment our domains that are associated with that AEP are just the VMware environment. So we're going to also add in that bare metal environment we've just created. Which is bare metal blades. Okay, so that in effect we'll add those extra VLANs to the current VPCs going down to the UCS. Okay. So then what we now need to do is, because there's no uh, CDP or LLDP to work out these VLAN associations, uh, we'll just define them statically. So if I have a look in UCS at my bare metal server, so you can see here I have a bare metal server uh, which has got a VNIC and it's statically uh, trunking in VLAN 1021 and is the native VLAN. Okay, so I shall create that mapping in ACI. Okay, so 
so we decide what tier we're going to have it in so this is going to be on our application tier so again I'll go into our application profiles and our app tier and I have domains so I want to make sure that our bare metal blade domain is associated with this AEP so I can add that association in bare metal blades and we shall deploy and resolve it on demand okay so this is the bit we need so the static ports I'm gonna have to put a static binding in there so basically to tell it that VLAN 1021 on that VPC should be allocated to the app domain so it's a virtual port channel so we have two defined which is our UCS FIA and FIB so we'll do FIA first and the VLAN we are using is 10.21 and it's a trunk port I'll do the same for FIB so virtual port channel FIB the VLAN is the same 10.21 on demand and trunk that's fine I'll submit that. Okay, so let's kind of have a look at our bare metal blade. Let's see if we can actually ping our default gateway within the bridge domain. Ping 20.20.20.254. Okay, that's always a good start. And because we've got that contract in place, we should also be able to ping our web VMs 10. Dot ten dot ten dot one. Perfect. So let's go and have a quick look at our application, how it looks within ACI. That just needs a bit of a refresh. There we go. So you see that our app tier now has a bare metal associated. Okay, so again, our, our final check is to go into our app EPG and just make sure that we're learning that bare metal IP address and it's saying learned. So you notice that that's not part of the VMM domain, but it is on the same port channel and with the static VLAN that we've mapped it to. Okay, so let's just have a quick summary of where we are. Okay, so we've done our VMM integration with our uh, ESX blades and we've put our two web endpoints in our web EPG and our app EPG and we have communication between the two and we've integrated our bare metal Windows blade into the app EPG. Okay, so that concludes this bite-sized video. Um, hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you at the next one.